Well, there are many factors that may contribute to violence inside our schools. And tonight, our week-long look at those problems and possible solutions turns to the role of technology. NBC 26's Matt Jarko spoke with experts about the possible dangers of the rising amount of screen time. We commonly think of our cell phones as a way to keep us plugged in to the world around us, but experts say this way of communication may actually be leading to a society becoming disconnected. It's a day and age of constant communication. We tell our friends what we're up to, show them pictures of where we've been, and converse about our day. But the tool that's keeping us so connected may actually be doing just the opposite. We're moving towards almost a non-relational society, which is kind of oxymoronic. A study by a nonprofit organization advocating for safe technology usage in children, Common Sense Media, found teens who use a smartphone spend four hours and 38 minutes using it every day. Teens who use a phone for social media average almost two hours a day. Other high uses are listening to music, watching TV, and playing electronic games. A Menasha psychologist we talked with says those numbers could be leading to a problem. The social environment uh, is, seems to be very fractured or disconnected um, in face-to-face -face interactions. We sat down with a group of Oshkosh North High School students face-to-face -to, -face to get their thoughts on what that disconnection could mean. I definitely think that, that being disconnected from other people in that way and kind of getting lost in these you know, pits of different ideologies can, can lead to, you know, uh, either radicalization or just intense depression or, you know, just, just a separation from your friends and people around you at school or at home. Students say those kinds of feelings can feed into what they call a toxic online environment with little to no tolerance. Look at a post like, oh, they disagree with me. Well, I don't care then. I don't care about their, what they think, how they feel. I'm right, you're wrong. It's that type of society that we live in today. And of course, like I said earlier, this polarizes America as a whole. And students say behind the screen of social media is a deceptive world. The way it's painted is that everyone's life is perfect, um, and that you can start to feel like your life isn't, um, and that you aren't measuring up. It's hard to see you know, the wonderful lives that people are, are living, um, and it, it's, it's toxic to your own mental health. So I deleted my Instagram and Twitter. I just couldn't deal with it anymore. Experts say screens are also shifting what it means to be social. It's crucial to, to have uh, social connections that are face-to-face, hand-to-hand, hug-to-hug, if you will. But that's not the direction much of society is taking. People can go an entire day with very little face-to-face -face or social connections. Siri can answer all of our questions. And in Seattle, a new store called Amazon Go lets customers come in, grab their food, and leave. Cameras and sensors track customers and the food they take, which is paid for through an Amazon account. Customers don't ever have to interact with another person. And while technology such as this new Amazon store has benefits, people need to be aware they must balance their lives and seek out real human interaction. I think it's, it's really cool that we're you know, able to you know, use technology for a lot of a lot of new things and effectively present information to people and it's to communicate with people at long distances but on the flip side I do think it's still important to have you know these these face-to-face -face conversations. Experts say a growing dependency on technology can affect a child's mental health when a person struggling becomes disconnected. Then it just becomes internalized where they don't know how to process uh, those feelings of estrangement. The shooter in Parkland, Florida posted extremist views online. The Sandy Hook school shooter lived almost in isolation, constantly playing video games online. The struggle with we've learned is that you have to have emotional intelligence, you know, not just verbal or nonverbal intelligence. Experts say parenting plays a key role in developing real connections. The internet or cell phones are okay for kids, but parents need to choose what's best and limit technology. Freedom and responsibility. Uh, and Responsibility is two words, being able to respond. And responsibility falls to parents as well, having those face-to-face -face interactions themselves. The best thing we can do for our kids is to make sure that they're loved and they're cared about in the home and that they, f they feel safe and that we do everything we can 
uh, to make sure that they have a safe, nurturing environment in the home. I think that's absolutely fundamental. Experts say there are steps you can take to start limiting a child's screen time. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends children younger than 18 months old should avoid the use of screen media. Through age five, they recommend limiting screen time to one hour a day. Then from ages six and older, AAP recommends parents decide on and set consistent limits on time spent using media and the types of media. That limit should depend on age, health, personality, and development. The AAP also recommends parents prioritize creative, unplugged playtime for younger children, and as they get older, continue to balance media with other healthy, active behaviors. Matt Jarko, NBC 26.